You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. God's Pure Word of Faith with Richard Harden can now be heard Monday through Friday mornings at 7 a.m. Central, 8 Eastern, and on Saturday and Sunday mornings at 6 a.m. Central, 7 Eastern. Join him and let's turn our country back to God. It only takes a spark to start a forest fire. Let's get on fire for the Lord. Right here on KLRN Radio and the Spark Radio Network. Visit Richard's website at raharden.com. That's the World Wide Web at R-A-H-A-R-D-I-N dot com. At his website, you can see a summary of the six books he has written, where purchases may be made. He also has a link to 18 videos on YouTube and several blogs about Christian beliefs. If you prefer, visit Amazon.com backslash Kindle and type in Richard Harden to see and purchase his books. Each of my programs are being saved so that you can listen to them at any time. There's just four simple steps to find the past programs. Go to www.spreaker.com. That's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. Enter my name, Richard Harden, in the search box in the top center of the home page. Click on the brown icon, which has the Bible, two candlesticks, and a cross in the background. A list of my programs will come up. You're listening to God's Pure Word of Faith with Richard Harden. Richard will guide you through the Bible and help you find God's purpose for your life. Now here's teacher and author Richard Harden. Welcome to God's Pure Word of Faith. I'm Richard Harden, and again, I want to thank the Lord and the management of KLRN Radio for this great opportunity to share God's Word with you today. I'm going to be discussing uh, a couple of questions that have been asked through the ages. Why do bad things happen to good people? And conversely, why do good things, so many good things happen to bad people? Well, everyone for the message I'm going to be sharing now, everyone is grouped into five kind of people for this message. There are children who are below what we call like the age of accountability in God's eyes. They haven't come to the age of responsibility. Um, he, God has not brought them to a knowledge of Him and His saving love. They haven't reached what we call the age of accountability. Now, there isn't a specific age set for everyone. Um, but the age is determined between each person and God. You know, their circumstances of being born in this world, where they're born, things like this. Now, but when God reaches a point where he knows they're mentally capable to know him and his love and to be held accountable for their decisions, and, and to see it's only God that can do that. We can't because you, you see how you know, children are born with such different capabilities and everything, and only God can know their heart. All I can say about this group of people is I know it's God's will for everyone born on earth to go to heaven unless they specifically reject God after they reach that accountability. Because Jesus states in Matthew 25, 41, speaking to the lost people at judgment, says, Depart from me, ye cursed, in the eternal lake of fire, created for the devil and his angels. So see, no one is born predestined to go to hell. And nobody's born with... God allowing something to happen for them to go to hell 
without having an opportunity to accept him. Now, therefore, all persons who die before they reach the age of accountability uh, to God will go to heaven. This is a fair, I mean, God is a fair, merciful, honest, loving God, so there will not be an unfair decision at this court of judgment. Now, and I'll, well, except for one thing here, and children, well, you have to be very careful how you treat them, because in, in the book of Matthew, Jesus says that the children's angels are uh, always before the face of God. And in Hebrews 1.14, it says angels, God's ministering spirits. So, so there's angels there, the children's angels always before God. And it also says, but whoso offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged around his neck and that he were dragged into the depths of the sea or drowned, <laughs> drowned and dragged into the depths of the sea. So we have to be careful the way we uh, treat children. And especially, don't ever let yourself stand between a child and God. That is, you know, uh, keep them from going to worship services or keep them from something like this. Do everything you can to help them. Now, I'll spend the rest of my time now on the other four categories. And there's two categories, two kind of lost people. And we say lost people, it's, you know, uh, we're talking about uh, uh, people without Christ in their hearts. Uh, we would say they're not saved from their sins or that they're lost without the Spirit of Christ in their hearts. Romans 8 and 9 says, Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So uh, this is what I'm referring to when I say a lost person. They're, um, well, without Christ in their heart. One kind of lost person now have already rejected God's love of salvation. The other lost, you know, group of lost people have been rejecting God, but now have decided to turn to God. So there are people right now on earth that are without Christ in their heart, but they're making decisions today or yesterday or, you know, something like that, that they're going to set themselves to seek the Lord. They're going to start seeking God. I can remember when that happened to me. And, uh, but, you know, it was, I know God led me and helped me to make that decision and everything in His mercy because of uh, the attitude, but everybody's going to have to make a willful choice to receive or reject the Spirit of Christ in their heart. But right now, there's two kinds of those people. Some that aren't even considering today anything about the Lord. You know, they don't want even to even hear about God in our society and other places around the world. And uh, there's so many on earth that hate who we call our God, Jesus. Jesus being our God, you know, uh, part of the Trinity and everything. Now, there's two kinds of lost people. There are also two kinds of Christians. Some people are Christians who have received Christ in their hearts and are seeking God's word and will for their lives. And those who have received Christ in their heart but are not seeking God's will for their lives. Or they're involved in something like a common or secret sins. I say common because there's some sins so common today that I don't think people uh, think that much about doing them, you know. They don't think they're that important, but I'll show you in just a minute they are. But anyway, uh, they're involved in some kind of common or sins of our society, secret acts of sin. They're involved in false doctrines. Now, you say, well, who, you know, you don't know anybody involved in false doctrines and everything, but yet we have two or three hundred different kind of uh, denominations and churches, and, and some of them believe, you know, right opposite the others. So if they're both not wrong, at least one of them's got to be wrong if, if it's right opposite and everything. So, see, there are people that are in churches, mainline churches in our society, that are basing their beliefs and their emotional um, foundation and everything in their hearts and minds they're basing them on false doctrines and they're claiming those doctrines you know to be true and like it says in Proverbs 35 6 every word of God is pure shield them put their trust in him add thou not to it lest he reprove thee and thou be found a liar that means if you're basing your life and your uh, decisions on on uh, 
untruths or false doctrines that you've been taught and just raised up with and you haven't checked out with the Lord, your emotional foundation is not going to stand very strong when the uh, storms of life come. You're going to have part of your house built on the Lord and then the other part built on sand. You know, you're going to have a combination of both there. And, and that's going to allow openings for the devil to come in to your life when times of troubles come along. So there's two kind of lost people. Lost people that just don't care about God's word right now today. But there's some today, wherever they are around the world, that are going to be seeking God today and, and wanting to know, you know, the truth about God and everything. There's two kind of Christians. There's Christians who are seeking to do the best they can to seek the Lord and to, uh, in his true word, you know. But then there's Christians who are, uh, well, just living their life, going to church, carrying a Bible, something like that, you know, being a good person, paying their taxes, stuff like this. But they have so many common sins of our society in, in them. They're opening a door for the devil to come in. They have... Uh, secret acts of sin, some do, and, and some have, you know, false doctrines. Now, they're not intentionally in these false doctrines it, because, you know, they were raised where their family and their good friends are, and it must be good, you know, and they, um, there's so many good things going on in our church and stuff, you know. Well, it doesn't really matter that we neglect this or whatever, you know, like some people say, well, yeah, I believe speaking in tongues is true and of the Lord, but I don't need them or something like that. You know, they're, they're blocking out things. If things are gifts from God, you should want them, not want to block them out. But anyway, uh, false doctrines and just plain, pure deceptions from the devil. Now, before starting these four groups of categories, two types of lost people, two types of Christian, I want to share with you about my personal website where I have six books, uh, very cheap not cheap, no, they're very low cost because I set them as low as I could with the publishers because they have to have a certain level, you know, like that so they can um, make some money off of publishing the books for me and everything, but I set them very low. In fact, five of my books are only $7 and any one of them can change your life, any one of them can change our country. That's how important they are. That's why I wouldn't have written them. I wouldn't have taken the time just to say something else and try to say it in prettier words or something than someone else has already said but there's things in our society images of God and you know things like this character of God that, that are uh, being mistaught um, God is not being represented correctly in his nature and character in our society and there's also things that we need to know about faith and things like that that aren't being taught in our society correctly and everything but anyway I want to share with you about my website and uh, I'll be right back then in just a couple of minutes. Visit Richard's website at raharden.com. That's the World Wide Web at rahardin.com. At his website, you can see a summary of the six books he has written, where purchases may be made. He also has a link to 18 videos on YouTube and several blogs about Christian beliefs. If you prefer, visit Amazon.com backslash Kindle and type in Richard Harden to see and purchase his books. And praise the Lord, I hope you will do that. Uh, now, we just talked about one of the five types of people, the children. Two kinds of lost people now, two kinds of Christians. Let's see how God has related to them in some of the ways. Uh, First, in Exodus chapter 33, verse 19, God says, I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And if you look at the scriptures around it, what he means is uh, he is the one who determines when he will show mercy. We have all kind of special promises and great and precious promises from God for those of us that are seeking the Lord and, and you know, trying to do the best we can, everything like this, and seeking to serve Him. In fact, it says in Hebrews, if there's anything to fear, fear missing some of God's great and precious promises. But see, we have those promises to us, but and, and they have conditions. If we meet those conditions of the promises, like the promises to all the people on earth, is if you'll humble yourself and uh, ask the Lord to forgive your sins and invite um, His Spirit, Christ, into your heart, and commit your life to him. Now, he's promised if we will do that, an honest prayer calling out to him, 
He will respond, forgive our sins, cleanse our hearts, creating us a new heart, and he'll put his spirit in us and we'll become a child of God. See, he responds to us meeting the uh, requirements of the promise. Because he, he's, Jesus did so much in his perfect walk of faith and everything uh, to die on the cross for us, to set up these promises and, and to build a foundation for the promises that, you know, that we don't have to, you know, offer sacrifices every year again all the time. See, so, and the other promises are like that too. We need to know the promises because it says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. And all these great and special promises, we need to know more about them. Now, in Romans chapter 1, we're going to talk about first lost people who have rejected Christ and they're just living in that today and they don't have any intent in their heart right now to uh, seek Him, turn to Him. In fact, they're doing everything they can to and uh, joy all the people around them that are like that too. But in Romans chapter 1 verse 18 it says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. See, they know the truth but they're holding it in unrighteousness. Uh, now righteousness is when we accept and obey God's word. Unrighteousness they're holding in is they know God's word but they're rejecting it. See, so they're holding his word in unrighteousness. And it says God has, you know, uh, shown it to him. We're all without excuse. And in verse 22, the scripture says, during this time that they're rejecting God's word, you know, they think they're smarter and wiser. But it says in verse 22, professing themselves to be wise, they become fools. Now, so that's the scripture. Whenever the word fool is used or foolishness or something, it's not like today where we say, oh, he's just acting foolish, you know. He's acting silly, acting crazy, something like that. No, that's not the fool of the Bible. In the Bible, when it says the fool, they became as fools, it says the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Now, see, that's how serious it is when it talks about foolishness or fools in the Bible. It's been changed a little bit in our society, like most other words of the scriptures, because the scriptures were the first textbooks of our country. So the the words from the scriptures became you know, common in everyday society and they still are but people don't realize so much how just how much of the our language is based in the Bible but uh, so okay these people you know they uh, profess themselves to be wise but they've become fools verse 26 it says at this cause God gave him up to vile affections um, about the women and men and everything like that. And then verse 28 says, Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them up to a reprobate mind. That sounds so terrible, and it is terrible. But reprobate means just not knowing right from wrong. See, they think they're wise, but they become foolish. Uh, and they're not wise. They don't know right from wrong. You can hear these talk shows on TV sometime like that where they talk about truth and talk about this. You know, just, and, and they can't understand it. Now, in Luke... Uh, chapter 6, verse 27 through 36. I won't read all these, naturally. I don't have time. But uh, to these kind of people, God wants us as Christians to allow him to work in and through us to them. Now, that's what charity is called. But most Bibles don't have charity in it now. Just a, I think the Catholic and King James Bibles are the only ones that still have the word charity. Uh, to show them God's love, share testimonies with them, you know, so that uh, maybe they can see that they're missing something and be changed and decide that they want to, you know, seek the Lord, maybe try what we have. Now, this is what charity is. It's God's love in the heart of Christians, through the heart of Christians, to lost people. Because, see, that way it's God in their heart, God himself working with the Christian, trying to reach out to those lost people again. That's charity. And I think that's one reason why the devil had it taken out all the, uh, Bibles because it's a work of God with man. It's a joint effort between us and God going and sharing with that person God's love. Now, the only promises these people have that are rejecting God um, is that if they will repent, turn from their sins, humble themselves, ask Jesus to forgive them and come into their hearts, he'll forgive their sins, creating them a new heart, put his spirit in their hearts so that they become a child of God too. Now, even though God still loves them with a perfect love, they only have God's love to them, his mercy on them, 
his love on them and everything, and his word to them, and what he can get us Christians to share through our heart to them, you know, the charity. Now, Isaiah 59, 21, they're like the people of the Old Testament, where it says, God says, this is my covenant with them. My spirit is upon them, and my words are to them. See, so, uh, and that's it. And God has exalted his word above all his names. Uh, he says in uh, Psalms 138, 2, uh, that God has magnified his word above all his names, and he respects his word. God only respects those people who respect his word. King Saul didn't respect God's word and obey. God took him out of being a king. Now, and, and like that, Moses didn't respect him. He struck the rock when he was supposed to have spoken to it, and God didn't allow him to come into the promised land. Okay, now he ex respects those who respect his word, not the position we have in life, because he's the one that gives us that position. He and his word are the same as a reason, because he respects those that respect him. Still, God blesses those people, though, even though they're rejecting him and have no intent right now to turn to him. It says in Romans 2, 4, or despises thou the riches of goodness and forbearance, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. God blesses lost and unrepentant, rebellious people, and that is why good happens to bad people. Now, the other lost people that are today, right now, looking, you know, seeking God and, and realizing they're missing something, they want God. In Revelation 12:11. They overcame him, speaking of the devil, by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony. See, people, that they've seen what's happened in Christians' lives, and somehow or another God has worked through Christians to talk to them, and, and he's worked through in other ways to speak to them, dreams, visions, or whatever. But now they've decided to turn to him. And uh, Ezekiel 33, 11, God says, Say unto them as I live, saith the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. But that they turn from their evil way. Turn ye from your evil ways, or why do you die? See, he's reaching out to them. He wants them to. Now, Jeremiah 29, 13, you shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. They're going to start seeking today, and you know, seeking and searching. Isaiah 55, 6 to 7. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him to our God, and he will abundantly pardon his sins. And today in our age, he will forgive their sins, create them a new heart, put his spirit in them, and they will be then children of God. Matthew 7, 7, it says for those people today, promise to them, asking you shall be given you, seeking you shall find, knocking doors shall be opened. Everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Revelation 3, 20. Um, it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him. See, if you knock, he will hear and answer the ones, the lost people that are seeking him today. And now while they're seeking him, they have this divine protection. Because like it says here, Seek and you shall find. Knock and doors will be open. One uh, part, people start seeking God and, and the devil's bound right then from taking their life. That's for sure. Because if they seek they will find. Second Peter three nine. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise that some men count slackness, but long suffering, waiting for us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And first John three twenty three says, This is his commandment that we believe on the name of his Son Jesus Christ, love one another as he gave us commandment. God orders all people to come to him. Now see, we're the only thing in the universe, our mankind, that can reject God's word. You know, when Jesus spoke to the tree and cursed it, it had to die. When Jesus spoke to the winds and the waves, they had to calm down. You know, all of God's creation obeys God's word except for mankind. We have the choice not to obey. Now, God orders all to come to him. And when somebody uh, turns and starts seeking God, they're going to find God if they're seeking him with all their heart because Psalms 34 7 says the angel of the Lord encamps around about them that fear him and delivers them the devil cannot get through that shield of protection a person has when they're seeking God as long as they continue to seek him now they may seek him you know like uh, find out you know they're sinner now a lot of people don't get past that first step in our society today because they don't believe in sin or something but once a person accepts that they're a sinner from God then uh, 
he teaches them that Jesus is the answer for sin, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, the eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Well, some of them might say, well, I don't want to be one of the Jesus freaks or something like that. So then, you know, then they're turning from God's teaching, and the devil does have openings into their life then. But as long as a person is seeking God and following him, in John 6.45, Jesus says, They shall all be taught of God. As people respond positively to God's teaching, they have a divine protection that the devil cannot break through. Now, two kinds of lost people. Some that don't care about God today and everything, but God wants us in mercy to keep sharing with them, praying for them, being a good example to them, witnessing to them. And some that are seeking the going to be seeking God today. As you go across uh, your day to day, meet a lot of people, some of them may be the ones right there that God wants you to help them and share with them to help them find him. As a Christian, that is our duty, to be ambassadors for Christ, to share, to be a priest in our neighborhood today to everybody we meet. And I'll be right back in just a couple of minutes now with the two kinds of Christians. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. God's Pure Word of Faith with Richard Harden can now be heard Monday through Friday mornings at 7 a.m. Central, 8 Eastern, and on Saturday and Sunday mornings at 6 a.m. Central, 7 Eastern. Join him and let's turn our country back to God. It only takes a spark to start a forest fire. Let's get on fire for the Lord. Right here on KLRN Radio and the Spark Radio Network. Visit Richard's website at raharden.com. That's the World Wide Web at rahardin.com. At his website, you can see a summary of the six books he has written where purchases may be made. He also has a link to 18 videos on YouTube and several blogs about Christian beliefs. If you prefer, visit Amazon.com backslash Kindle and type in Richard Harden to see and purchase his books. Each of my programs are being saved so that you can listen to them at any time. There's just four simple steps to find the past programs. Go to www.spreaker.com. That's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. Enter my name, Richard Harden, in the search box in the top center of the home page. Click on the brown icon, which has the Bible, two candlesticks, and a cross in the background. A list of my programs will come up. Welcome back. We just discussed... uh, two kinds of lost people where God blesses lost people to draw them to repentance and then God protects lost people that set themselves to seek the Lord with all their heart while they're seeking they have the special divine protection that God will come to them and and make his will and his word known to them now and good things will happen to them because God blessing people he doesn't beat people up to try to draw them to him he blesses them to try to draw them to him. You know, and that kind of confuses things. When I was uh, in thinking I was a Christian for 20-something years, I, I did a lot of what I would consider, you know, pretty good things, you know, like that happened in my life and everything. But I took credit for it. I said, I did this and I did that and, you know, something like this. Uh, it never dawned on me, you know, that, you know, well, you know, I should be, you know, thanking the Lord and giving him credit for it if I was a Christian. But then I found out years later I wasn't a Christian. I see that God was blessing me all that time. And and I was taking the credit for it. I wasn't sharing with others how God had done this for me and God had done that for me and everything like that. It just, and that's the way most people are naturally, you know, take that credit, pride and stuff like this. But now, two kinds of Christians. First one I'll discuss is uh, the Christian has Christ in their heart. They're seeking God's will and word for their life. Um, And they have God's special blessings of his care and protection and things like this, like Romans 8, 28. Uh, And we know that all things work together for good for them that love the Lord or them that love God to them who are called according to his purpose. Now notice that called according to his purpose. You hear so many people when tragedies happen, everything, they say, oh, well, uh, you know, God will work something out of it. All things work together for good. And that's not true the way they're saying that. 
it's only for those people who have received Christ in their heart and they're called according to his purpose and they're following his purpose and everything in um, what is Second Timothy 1 9 it says uh, he saved us and called us to a special calling not according to our works but according to his own purpose and grace created in Christ Jesus before the world began everybody coming on this earth has a special holy calling and this is what we're talking about here people who are seeking that holy calling and are open to the Lord and saying Lord please show me you know I'll go I'll do you know whatever it is something like that and he has different callings for all of us and and these are the ones then that receive this blessing of Romans 8:28 and this promise all things will work together for good whatever the devil tries to come against you again you know against you for <laughs> God will turn around and bless it I had that happen in my life years ago. This is just one good example here. I I took hundred dollars. That's all I could afford, and I put some little um, one-minute announcements like this, you know, like little scriptures and something like this together. And I went to this uh, radio station and uh, got a contract for about seven or eight times they would run during the week. You know, little messages about the Lord and everything that I wanted to share. Uh, that was a long time ago, but anyway. Oh, somebody from church or somewhere around here said, that guy's of the devil. You can't do that or whatever and everything like that. So they didn't run them. But I, I kept listening and listening, didn't hear them. And I'd call over there and they wouldn't respond. You know, they kept my money, <laughs> didn't run the ads, and wouldn't even talk to me on the phone. Now, that that was a Christian station that was doing that. I was so upset. I said, oh, God, what I do? Because back then, oh, I just we were so tight with money and our you know, wife and four kids and everything. So within two weeks, God had turned that around to where another radio station gave me thousands and thousands of dollars worth of free radio time. And it was almost unbelievable to me that you know, it could happen like that. But see, all things worked together good. One rejected my efforts I was trying to do for the Lord. I wasn't just doing it for myself or something like that. It was to reach out to people like I'm trying to do now. But uh, that station rejected Christian station and God opened it up just thousands of times greater. That's too long a story to tell you all that. But anyway, all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and called according to his purpose. He'll turn things around. The devil come against you like the devil tried to come against oh, Joseph back in uh, Genesis chapters 40 to 50. God turned it around for his good and Joseph became a ruler of Egypt and saved many, many lives because of his obedience to the Lord. Now, in 1 John 3, 22, whatsoever we ask, we receive him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Obeying his commandments is not the end for us as Christians. That's what, you know, it's good not to murder, rob, rape, and things like this, and, you know, envy people or stuff like that, like the Ten Commandments say and everything. You know, we yes, we should. But it says, do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Do those things pleasing in his sight. Like I mentioned earlier, we as Christians should be allowing God to work in us and through us to those people who are rejecting him. He wants to use us as an example to them, as an ambassador to share with them his word, his living word to them and everything. He wants to use us to go and help. And they may curse us sometimes. They may, you know, not want our help. I sent out postcards one time. <laughs> Going to have a neighborhood Bible study. One man called on the phone, just cussing me so much, said, who told you to send me that? <laughs> he thought that some of the neighbors said something, you know, because they thought he was so bad. That uh, I said, no, 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 no. I sent the cards to everybody, you know, like that. I said, you were one of them, and I'd like to invite you to it. I went down there and met him and, you know, assured him that nobody had um, sick me on him because he was supposedly so bad and everything. But anyway, uh, do those things that are pleasing sight. Go, reach out, you know. Try to tell them about Jesus. If, if Jesus means that much to you and your heart and everything like that, let people know about it. Consider your salvation, how the Lord, you know, worked in your life to bring you to him and then share with them what he's done in your heart and life since then. Philippians 4, 6 says, Be careful, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be known to God. See, that is a, a great statement there for us to not let our problems get bad and big. Start right when you start getting apprehensions about something. You know, when you uh, get to be concerned about something. Take your concern to the Lord then. Let your request be known to God. Romans 12, 1 and 2. As Christians in. It says, 
Apostle Paul was speaking. This is the gifts of the Spirit chapter, and he's speaking to Christians. He said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, see, brethren, he's talking to other Christians, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So treat your bodies correctly. If you're eating wrong and you know you are, cut it back, cut it back. Start getting back off of that. Exercise some. You know, take care of yourself so that you can be used, so that you can even go when the Lord wants you to go. You know, uh, um, so many Christians are sick today because they violated God's laws and everything in ways that the devil comes in and can attack you and has an open door to. But anyway... Uh, Pick yourself up with the Lord and say, Lord, please help me. I'm going to start eating right. I'm going to start exercising. I'm going to you know, let you work in me to use me physically so I can go for you. Be not conform, conform this world. Be transformed by the renewing of mind. He saves us. He creates in us a new heart, clean heart, pure heart, puts his spirit in us. We become a child of God. But he don't change our mind. He changed our attitudes and things in our heart. But we got so many memories of back here in the past, we need to start studying the scriptures and and like it says here, be not conformed to this world. Don't you know, don't hang on to it. Start learning from the scriptures, you know, uh, what you things you're supposed to be thinking. One place Apostle Paul says, think on those things pure, holy, good, and just and all this. Now he must have had a real problem with mind control because he teaches it so much the way what well, Jesus did too he said you know go the second you know mile have that already set to go the second mile pray for those despitefully using thing because see the apostle Paul had killed Christians before he became a Christian and on those lonely trips he took a lot of times just him or maybe somebody else on those long trips you know uh, night time around a campfire he must have had a lot of time to think there and he had to control his thinking and think on those things that are pure and holy and good or he might think back and see those faces of people that he had beaten and had arrested and had killed and everything as Christians and and those those would haunt him and everything but he would have to turn to the Lord ever thought to the obedience of Christ you know to overcome those thoughts now Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 through 2 if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. You have the choice. You can set your affections. Now, up here it says, if ye be risen with Christ, seek those things above. Or in other words, if you claim to be a Christian, seek those things of Christ, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections. See, you make the choice to set your affections. Like in Romans chapter 12 verse 2 I just read be not conformed to this world be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind your mind's not going to be renewed just by you being um, a Christian you've got to get God's word and, and allow his word to come into you to renew your mind and get you focused in in the right direction in this Christian life and everything now it's, it's things it's choices you have to make well, I have to make all of us have to in Ephesians 5 17 20 is a good way to start says, Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Don't be drunk with wine, where it is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Have your joy be in the Spirit of Christ. Now, listen. Speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. Speaking. Who makes you speak? You make the choice to speak. Just like up there. You make the choice to you know, study and be not conform to this world. You make the choice to set your affection on Christ. Now it says, speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Find some scriptures to start singing and praising God with. He loves to hear his word because he and his word are the same. So when you're speaking his word faithfully and speaking his words back to him, it's like God coming in and through you and circling around to God and back and forth to you. Building up his spirit in your heart and everything. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Get some decent music around the house and everything. Then verse 20. Giving thanks always for all things to God and the Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now this for all things is talking about for all things. You know, God's blessed you with. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. And, and thank the Lord for them. So here is a good verse to memorize. 
Ephesians 5, 17 through 20. Be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is for me, for you, for everybody else. Be not drunk with wine, where it is excess, but be filled with His Spirit. Speaking to ourselves, each of us, in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in our heart to the Lord, giving thanks always to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, that's what glorifies God and we praise Jesus because God was so pleased with him and his perfect walk of faith and his uh, shedding of his blood in seven places and on the cross, you know, sprinkling his blood for us and everything and, and not sinning, not arguing back, not fighting everything. He's so pleased with Jesus and it pleases him when we are too, when we will, you know, praise Jesus, it glorifies God. And uh, giving thanks to the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. First Peter 5, 7 to 8 says, Casting all your cares on Jesus, all your cares on him, for he careth for you. He cares so much he died for us. Be sober. That's sober-minded, but also be sober-minded. It means be sober from drinking and stuff like that. Because you can't be sober-minded and drinking. Okay. For he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And he does that through deception and everything. Now, those are the promises to the people seeking the Lord with all their heart. Now, the second kind of Christians. These Christians have received Christ in their heart. Oh, and the first kind. A lot of good things happen to those good people, the first kind of Christians. Now, the second kind of Christians now... Most of them look good in our eyes. But now, the, these Christians have received Christ in their heart, but are not seeking God's will for their lives. Or they are involved in some kind of common or secret sins, acts of sin, false doctrines, and other such deceptions of the devil. These Christians are missing God's great and precious promises for a special blessing. Now, there's got to be a bunch of them around. There really does. Our hospitals are filled with Christians where the devil has come in and attacked them and brought curses in their life. Also, you know, we have two or three, four hundred different denominations and everything, believing right opposite of other ones. So one of them's got to be wrong, or maybe both of them are wrong, but at least one of them's got to be wrong if they're right opposite of what somebody else is believing. Well, the devil's deceived them in believing different uh, and just on like this, you know, our society is filled with Christians that have false doctrines in their life and deceived by the devil and things like this. Now, James 3.16 says, Where there, uh, see if you can identify the devil working in any of these scriptures here. James 3.16, For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and ever evil work. Oh, how about in the choir when somebody gets to sing too much, you know, something like that, the specials. Uh, envying and strife is confusion, every evil work. That means the devil's working there somewhere. Or other. In the deacons' meetings, arguments and things back and forth here. Philippians 2.14 says, do all things without murmuring and disputing. You know, the arguing in the, the, those meetings and elders' meetings. Different leaders, you know, in the church arguing back and forth or trying to, you know, um, get, you know, like money for the women's missionaries, for young ministry, youth ministry, for elderly ministry, for missions, for evangelism, for different things like this. And, and there's all this competition and struggling and arguing and everything. But it's for a good purpose. Oh, it's for the Lord. No, that's not what the Scripture says. Do all things without murmuring and disputing. First Peter 4, 9. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. Second Corinthians 2, 10 and 11 says, Forgive others lest you give Satan the advantage in your life. Uh, how many of you out there listening right now, myself, you know, we, we have to, you know, that's not just a good principle to live by. It says here we're giving Satan the advantage. Our hospital beds are filled with Christians that are holding unforgiveness. That one thing there, that one, uh, you might say, uh, well, I don't know, just, just neglecting God's word. Not taking it serious, not taking it important, has a lot of people in the hospital beds across our country now, Christians, who are holding unforgiveness, and they don't think it has anything to do with their situation. But it, it, it says in Proverbs 26, 2, curses do not come without a cause. That unforgiveness does have something to do with your health and your well-being. And um, look in Deuteronomy chapter 28, where it has the list of curses. Look at the list of blessings. There's not one sickness on the blessing side of God's 
what he has for us, a blessing. There's not one sickness. All the sickness and curses, and that's what you see in so many people's lives today that claim to be Christian and everything. Unforgiveness could be the big door that's open to the devil. Mark 11:26. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. Now, this is a very interesting verse, and I want to challenge you to do something. Look it up to see exactly what it says. And if you go to my website and send me an email with the correct wording of that verse from your scriptures, I'll send you a free book. Okay? And I'll be given the website address in just a minute and everything. Mark 11:26. You look that up. It is so special and so different. Uh, not Mark 11:27, not Mark 11:25, but look up Mark 11:26 and send me the exact correct wording. Like I say, but if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. Now, Proverbs 35 and 6, we all have to measure ourselves according to this. Every word of God is pure. He's a shield to them that put their trust in Him. See, we've got to put our trust in God's pure word, not just what we think it is, not what our group says it is. Because a lot of those groups have got to be wrong because they teach the opposite of each other. So we've got to have God's pure word. And the only way we can get it is on our knees in our heart, praying, seeking God for his pure word, studying the different uh, copies of the scriptures and things like this, which also say different things. But now the rest of that says, Every word of God is pure. He's a shield of them, put their trust in him. Add thou not to his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Now how many... People get up in the morning and put their shield of faith up, supposedly. The shield of faith has got to be based on accepting and obedience to God's pure word. Faith comes of hearing, hearing the word of God. But see, it's got to be his pure word. So that means we can't just make up something good and claim that as our you know, foundation for our faith and everything. Ephesians 4, 26, 27. Be angry, sin not. Let not the sun go down your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. See, if you're holding anger and bitterness about something at work or something, you know, in your family or something, you know, whatever. Somebody cheated you or something. That's giving place to the devil in your life. Second Chronicles twelve fourteen says that it's evil for us to not seek the Lord. Rehoboam did evil because he prepared not his heart to seek the Lord. Many have died, families killed, burned at the stake, translating the scriptures for us common people that we can have them to read. You know, even a hundred years ago, most of us wouldn't have been able to read that well to read and study the Bible. Especially 200 years ago, we probably wouldn't even have had a Bible, something like that. And now with 26 major uh, versions, we have concordances that tell us where every subject, every word is uh written in the King James Bible, that is, and you can compare it to other Bibles then, too. We have computers to study the Bible. We have freedoms to read and study the Bible. Well, freedom so far, but we're losing those freedoms daily in different ways. And uh, Christians are being pushed out and taken as if Christians are the problem with our society and everything. Now, what do you think might be one of the greatest concerns when we appear before the judgment seat of Christ to not only get rewards, but it says we must answer for the good and bad we've done. What is the bad? Well, unfor I mean, forgiven sins won't be there against it because God says throughout the Bible, I'll forgive and forget their sins. What will be there? Unforgiven sins. Things we haven't taken to the Lord. We haven't honored His Word like Psalms 138.2. God honors His Word because He and His Word are the same. He's exalted His Word above all His names. But look at all these things here, concordances, Bibles, and computers to study God's Word and everything. And most people aren't even studying God's Word. Might at the most carry the Bible on Sundays to church or something like that, but no respect for God's Word and daily life and everything. It's just kind of live a good life and you figure you must be, you know, doing all right if you aren't murdering and killing people, you know, or robbing and things like this. No. God has a way for us daily to walk by faith, to hear His voice, and, you know, to hear his voice clearly, if any of you out there have a close friend, like a girlfriend, boyfriend, a husband, wife, something like this, and you go to a big party and uh, somebody blindfolds you and then your mate, your friend goes off into the party and everything like that, you could walk through that party with all the other people talking and laughing and carrying on. You could pick out your wife, your husband, your friend, your child, 
but just by the tone of their voice you'd, you'd recognize their voice and that's the way it should be with Jesus as we walk through our daily life we should be able to hear his voice so clearly that from all others we hear throughout the day we'll recognize they're not my Savior Jesus speaking to me see so we need to learn to hear his voice like John 10:10 10, 10 says the thief, thief comes to steal kill and destroy but I've come that you might have life and life more abundantly he says my sheep hear my voice from all others they'll flee we need to be seeking him daily so we learn to hear his voice and walk with him we have that special holy calling created for us before the world began that we need to be seeking now when we as workers together with him beseech you also you receive not the grace of God in vain second Corinthians 6 1 what does it mean to receive the grace of God in vain you've received Christ in your heart the work of his spirit in your heart to create a new heart a new life and you aren't sharing it with others it's in vain now for you you'll be saved as by fire it says in 1st Corinthians 3 if you don't do any of the good works and sharing and everything like this but why not share with others think of how terrible hell is going to be in their lives give other people the opportunity to receive Christ like you don't let the grace of God be in vain in your heart that is you're a child of God but you don't care about anybody else that's kind of hard for me to understand but anyway that's what it says here as workers together with God we beseech you also you received not the grace of God in vain now listen to this in Hebrews chapter 2 verses 3 and 4 Now this is talking to Christians it says how shall we escape if we now we the, the writer of Hebrews includes himself so he's talking about to us as Christians how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation which at first began to be spoken of the Lord and was confirmed to us by them that heard him God also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders and divers miracles different miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost Holy Spirit according to his own will now it says how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation we will it says in first Corinthians as by fire you know Jesus says he'll never lose any of us but you know there's going to be some things like that failing to seek God failing to be a witness failing to share with others that are going to be the bad things when we stand before Christ at the judgment seat of Christ things we neglected to do and all oh, there's going to be people if he shows us in hell that we've known daily you know throughout our lives that didn't come to know Christ and they're there because of our neglect of our salvation we've taken our the work of grace like it says here of God in vain in our heart just for ourselves we've held it in we should be seeking to share with others Revelation 12 11, 7 they overcame him the devil by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony we are ambassadors for Christ we should be sharing John 10 10 says the devil is again trying to kill steal and destroy people and he won't stop until he kills people because he knows any time um, a person like this a, a Christian not doing anything can turn back to the Lord and really come on fire and be a danger to him and win other Christians to the, I mean win other people to the Lord and get them to turn to the Lord so this is why so many Christians are suffering bad things in their life because they've allowed so many doors in their life to be open and they think it's just a philosophy or well it's a good principle to live by to forgive others uh, but they did so he hurt me so bad she hurt me so bad you know that I'll never forgive them you know something like that they don't deserve it no they don't deserve it but we didn't deserve it when Christ forgave us and he wants us to show mercy like he did for us and you know coming into our heart and life after we were such bad sinners you know and we turned to him he forgave us our sins cleansed our hearts created in us a new heart a new life and put his spirit in us and now we are children of God he did all that for us can't we do something for him and share with our neighbor and share with the others and everything like that and let him live in and through us if you haven't received Christ in your heart or if you're a Christian out there listening and and you recognize that you haven't been visiting the hospitals doing these things helping the poor and things you know that you know you aren't being doing just pray along with Jesus I ask you to please forgive me and to cleanse me of my sins and my acts of sins I want to turn to you from my sins surrender my heart and life to you and invite your spirit Christ to create in me that new clean heart 
and live in my heart. And Lord, stir your spirit up in me if you are in my heart now. Stir your spirit up and let me know for sure it's you and not just my imagination. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. You know, now, depending on whether you know you weren't a Christian before or whether you're just turning back to the Lord or something like that, talk to him personally until you know for sure that Christ lives in your heart and you're set in the right way for him. And now a short message on Calvinism before we end today. John three sixteen seventeen. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him, Jesus, should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Now my revision is this for John three sixteen. For God so loved the people of the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, that Jesus should endure the loneliness, the suffering of the perfect walk of faith, and the painful sufferings of his seven sprinklings of his blood on the cross, by the crown of thorns, the plucking of his beard, the nails in his two feet, the nails in his two hands, and the terrible stripes on his back, that Jesus would go through all this suffering, God allowed these sufferings in his mercy so that all of God's already pre-elected and predestined people prior to birth to die and go to heaven, that they would actually die and go to heaven. That sounds so ridiculous. If only predestined or elected people prior to their birth go to heaven, then there would have been no need for the work and suffering of Jesus no one's destiny would or will ever be changed by Jesus' suffering and death on the cross for our sins and salvation because everything required for our salvation would have already been done prior to our birth by God's act of electing and predestining us to heaven or hell before birth. After God has predestined us to heaven or hell, there would be no need or no more to be done in heaven and earth. It would already be finished before our birth. So what's happening here is the devil hates Jesus so much that he's come up with this Calvinist, devilish, deceived theology that would have us think that we're predestined or elected prior to birth to go to heaven or hell and that would make all the suffering and work of Jesus as our Savior totally unnecessary, totally worthless, and Jesus totally useless. For his life and death on the cross would not change anything prior to, you know, people dying and going to heaven or hell. Because it's already been done by God predestining and electing them to heaven or hell before we were born. See how ridiculous that is. Good day. God bless you. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. God's Pure Word of Faith with Richard Harden can now be heard Monday through Friday mornings at 7 a.m. Central, 8 Eastern, and on Saturday and Sunday mornings at 6 a.m. Central, 7 Eastern. Join him and let's turn our country back to God. It only takes a spark to start a forest fire. Let's get on fire for the Lord, right here on KLRN Radio and the Spark Radio Network. Visit Richard's website at raharden.com. That's the World Wide Web at rahardin.com. At his website, you can see a summary of the six books he has written, where purchases may be made. He also has a link to 18 videos on YouTube and several blogs about Christian beliefs. If you prefer, visit amazon.com 
backslash Kindle and type in Richard Harden to see and purchase his books. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. 